Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine with
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A reading from Mark. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember arriving in Jerusalem. When I was privileged to go to Israel almost 20 years ago now, we first toured up into Galilee and then down to the Dead Sea and Jericho. And then finally, we made our way to Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Since we were coming from Jericho, we were coming from the east side over the Mount of Olives. And as we came down, we passed a tall row of cedar trees. Halfway down that row, the bus stopped, and our guide invited us to get out of the bus and to walk down the road just a bit. We did, and suddenly the cedar trees ended, and we found ourselves staring out over the whole city of Jerusalem, just across the valley from the gold dome that marks where the temple used to be. It was a stunning way to get our first glance of the holy city. And I think about that experience every time I encounter the story of the withered fig tree in our reading tonight. It must have been just such a place as I was that it happened with Jesus. This is always a bit of an uncomfortable miracle. Jesus approaches a fig tree that is full of leaves, and he goes over and finds that there are no figs on it. He curses the fig tree, and the next day it is all withered away. And it all seems so un-Jesus-like. Usually, Jesus' miracles were for the benefit of others, and it just seems out of place that he would get angry at a tree of all things 
and caused this to happen because he was hungry. It can seem kind of serving at first glance, self-serving. And that's just not the Jesus we know. But that's at first glance. And maybe we should take a longer look. Let's review the whole story. Jesus and his disciples were on their way into Jerusalem, like me, from the east. Jesus saw a fig tree in full leaf, and from a distance it looked great. And when he got there, as you know, there were no figs, and he cursed the tree. Then they went on into Jerusalem and to the temple, and there Jesus encountered the money changers. You had to use a special coin in the temple, and these merchants were offering to exchange these coins for regular money at a profit. And Jesus overturned their tables and drove them all out, calling the place a den of thieves. And then in the evening they left and went back to where they were staying to the east in Bethany. The next morning they passed the fig tree again and the disciples noticed that it had withered away. Jesus talked to them about having faith that could cast mountains into the sea. He's calling them to have faith that bears fruit for God's kingdom. Maybe to put it explicitly, he's calling them to bear figs for God's kingdom. And here's what this is really all about. You see, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem the same way that I did. So when he cursed that fig tree, he was in a place like I had been, on a hillside, just across the valley from the temple. And this miracle by Jesus wasn't self-serving or un-Jesus like. Rather, it was a symbolic action meant to say something very important. Jesus was saying, look, here was a fig tree that to all outward appearance looked fine and dandy, like it was bearing fruit. Right over there, just across the valley, is the temple. And to all outward appearances, it looks fine and dandy too. But just like this tree, it's not bearing fruit for God's kingdom either. And just like this tree withered away, the temple will too. Real faith isn't found over there, Jesus said. It's here with me. It's found where believers bear fruit for God. We've been focusing on forgotten miracles or, or miracles that get a bit overlooked in favor of other miracles that Jesus did. And this little one isn't so much overlooked as often misunderstood. And if we take it seriously, it forces us to ask some difficult questions. How am I like the fig tree? Do I look fine from a distance, but on closer inspection, Am I bearing fruit for God? And then you have to go on and ask the same questions about our church and about our society and about our world. We may not like the answers. Have faith in God, Jesus said to them, calling them to reach beyond themselves and the limitations of our world to find the true source of life. That day in Jerusalem, we got back on the bus and it carried us on our way to the rest of our marvelous adventure. And that's what happens with God too. God will carry us on God's way in love and in grace, leading us, watching over us, empowering us to be whom we are supposed to be as God's people. It's a marvelous adventure. Have faith in God. Bear fruit for God's kingdom.
the light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. <clears throat> An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name of languages and cultures you created all people in your image. Free us from prejudice and fear that we may see your face in the faces of people around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of compassion, whose Son became poor for our sake. Help us to see the face of Christ in those who are poor, and in serving them to serve you. Give us generous hearts, so that those living in poverty may have adequate food, clothing, and shelter. By your Spirit, move us to affirm the dignity of all people, and especially the most vulnerable in society. Lord, in your mercy. Your Triune God, whose will it is that humans live in community, bless family life everywhere and fill all homes 
with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Strengthen the commitment of husbands and wives to one another that they may mirror your covenant faithfulness. Pour out your spirit on parents that through them their children may taste your unconditional love. Empower all family members to live in your grace and forgiveness. Give to those who live alone peace and contentment in their solitude, hope and fulfillment in their love of you, and joy and companionship in their relations with others. In this time of isolation, fill our lives with you. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, your healing power is everywhere about us. Strengthen those who work among the sick. Give them courage and confidence in all they do. Encourage them when their efforts seem futile or when death prevails. Increase their trust in your power even to overcome death and pain and crying. May they be thankful for every sign of health that you give and humble before the mystery of your healing grace. In the midst of this pandemic, bring healing, health, strength, and the comfort that comes only from you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of mercy and love, we pray for particular needs from those in our family of faith. We pray for Michelle Wilson, a COVID-19 co-worker currently on a ventilator, and her 10-year-old son, Brandon, who tested positive, and they are friends of Lynn Floods. We pray for Leo Metzler in Prisma, Richland, we pray for Eva Wilbur in Lexington Medical Center. For all 2020 graduates and families who must find new ways to celebrate important milestones. And we pray in celebration with Helen Sands, who no longer tests positive for COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then lead us to act always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 